What up guys, welcome to another video. Today we are under the hood on the 350 and installing the IW1 oil catch can. They sent this out, thank you guys for sending this out. This is gonna go right here and mounts this bracket under the hood. And we've already got some deletes here on this motor from the previous owner. So now we're gonna hook up the catch can and catch some of that blow by. Little unboxing. Let's see what's in the box. We got our bracket with some cool packaging. I dig it. Ooh, an inhalator right there. Let's get the actual catch can out. Little black and gold. This is our black and gold. I mean black and red. <laughs> this is our uh, dipstick for our catch can, so we don't have to remove it and guess, which is a nice feature of this. Let's twist it. What happens when you don't empty your your catch can? I don't know specifically, but if you can envision this filling up and you have blow by coming into this from your engine and your intake, you can imagine what's gonna happen when you need this fills up and you have back pressure going back in and blowing a bunch of oil everywhere. So I've heard of nightmarish things, so that's why you have this dipstick because you do need to check it. I'm assuming every couple drives, we're gonna find out and let you know how often you have to change a catch can or empty it, I mean. So this is a really nice build quality. Have our hose that's needed which is super clutch oh look even is labeled oil catch can vacuum hose cool we have our directions shows us where it goes that's really easy cool This is a breakdown of what's in it. We have our oil dipstick, applied tape seal, inlet, remove base to empty catch can by unscrewing the base, the internal filter. Cool. Then we have our hose clamps and all the other stuff right here. 10 millimeter and we're gonna take off this bracket right here. Oh, that's tightening it, hello. Just the two bolts on the side is all you need. Yep. While Cam's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and use sealant tape. Just tape the threads on the edge of that, and then those screw straight into there. Make sure that's clear. You don't want any any sealant tape or anything getting mixed in with your oil. Once you have both of these, and they're hand tight, it's a three quarter inch wrench. We'll tighten it even more. We have our small Allen wrench. We're gonna remove these real quick. The bracket's gonna go on the car like this, and this is gonna mount here. So we're gonna put our bolts back in. The reason they have it set up like this is so you can use it in different cars, but this is the position that works in the 350 VQ engine. So this would be the same if you have a G35. All right, serious talk. I'm gonna make another video about this because everyone needs to know this, but in this video, I talked to Good Speed Performance, John, he's done a lot of 350Z work, so I talked to a reputable source to straighten the facts completely about PCV and catch cans and venting to atmosphere and things like that. So let's just talk about this engine real quick. I bought it this way. Notice right here, this is where the engine pulls air into the engine and that's a positive vacuum and this is a, or would that be positive uh, this is positive so usually there's a tube here that comes from right here it runs to where this filter is you know, and what, what's a super popular mod on 350z's is to help them from burning oil is people just delete that tube and then they'll vent that the they'll vent the negative pressure out and then just plug where positive pressure usually returns to the crank right so now blow by happens if you don't know what blow by is it's when a little bit of oil and such gets past the piston ring so you have a piston ring it's in the cylinder going up and down up and down up and down and then you have detonation or something like that where it it, it has you know two separate combustions and then you know 
adds extra pressure. Well, something's got to give. That piston ring is going to give and it's going to let oil go by into the top of your cylinder. And when your piston goes up, it's blowing oil and that becomes blow by. And so normally in a PCV system from factory, which every car does, that oil gets spit out, goes through this tube back into the engine and through the intake manifold. So when you have your Subaru or something like that or any car that's turbocharged, you will pull your intercooler off that's part of your intake system, your, your induction system, and there's gonna be oil in it. So that's from blow by. Oil in your intercooler blow by. This isn't a turbocharged engine, so it's a little bit more simple. So what this person did is you cut this off, you vent this. So when there's blow by happens, that vapor goes out of this little guy right here and any oil or anything like that's just gonna stick Trevor already pulled this off for us. You'll see oil right here. So it's got literally oil in this filter and that's what this catch can is gonna, gonna catch. But here's where it's important to know that with a catch can, we are connecting both sides now. So the oil's gonna come into here, go through the baffles and the filters. The thick oil's gonna stay at the bottom of the catch can because it has a venting system. And then that positive pressure is going to go back into the bottom of the engine into your crank and that's what you want so this system wasn't getting positive pressure pushed back into the crank it was only letting blow by out so that causes an issue because air is only going out one way and not back in and you lose horsepower and things like that it's just overall not healthy for your engine is this a quick fix cheap fix yes but they didn't do their homework a catch can is much simpler yes this doesn't cost anything but this little filter but it's not a good idea and we'll see if the engine runs a little bit better with a catch can so we'll find out but now we know that the oil is going to come out from blow by end up in here and positive air is going to go back into the crank and the engine is going to be running back to how it is from factory but in a good way and not recirculating it back into the intake it's a lot but i will break it down in another video soon back to our install we've got our two 10 millimeter bolts trevor put them in here hand tight i'm gonna go in here and snug them up real quick fit. when you hear about a catch can you're like oh that's got to be a rough install on some cars like the subarus that are turbocharged it is and it's very time consuming but this 350 could not be any easier and normally if you have a stock intake manifold you'll have a cover here and all you got to do is take that off with four bolts and you'll have access to all this mine doesn't have the cover so it's just ready to go and you can get to this bracket that's mounted to the power steering tank and the directions were actually super super easy it tells you exactly where it goes basically Right goes over to the left, left goes over to the right. We have this little cap on here I'm going to pull off real gently. No oil in there because that's obviously where the air goes back into the engine. And there's oil on this side to clarify even more because that's where it comes out in the blow by exit. So no, oops. This one goes to the, so we're going to run this hose under this guy. Slider on. Oh, a little more. And then we're gonna put it on the right side. Nope, oh, right. It goes on the left side. Oh, are you sure? Um, yep. Six. Okay. Six goes to six. The hose in the front goes to the left side if you're at my angle. And then there's a different hose clamp. That's pretty trick looking. That you'll see in a sec. And then this guy, let's run it through here. Oh shoot, let me do it this way. This slides on easy because it was already had a bunch of oil on it. Not that that's a good thing, but now I got that. Pretty much done. Tighten these up, tighten these up, and put this on. It's all tightened there. It's all tight in there. We have our nice red anodized holder. With our bolt with an Allen head. If you guys don't have Allen wrenches or ratchets and sockets, I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you guys can install this at your house. Do not be intimidated by this. I'll leave some Amazon links, you guys can hit, get it. Order it in two days, the tools will get there before this catch can even gets there. And don't over tighten this like I just did. This bolt head is pretty soft and I almost just stripped it. So I'm gonna leave it there. Plenty tight, 
everything's good to go. Let's try and start it up and see if it acts any different because it's going to sense, the car, the car is going to sense the positive crankcase vacuum pressure going back in. When looking for a catch can, I want to mention again the dipstick. You can, I can't really unscrew it right now, so I'd have to take off these two 10 millimeter bolts and then pull the catch can up, unscrew it, but then you have this dipstick so you don't have to waste your time. So when you're looking for a dipstick, buying one like this Ad W1 is a good idea to save you time from pulling stuff apart and then not having to empty it. So I'm assuming that it's going to only fill up on like drift days when you're like banging it on rev limiter but and blow by happening, maybe, or regular driving, not sure. We'll find out how long this lasts and we'll let you guys know. But for now, we're going to figure out how to get one of these on Trevor's car soon and we should be good to go. So I appreciate you guys watching the video. Hope you learned something. Do your research on PCV and how that works, but we're going to try our best to explain it again in the next video. So it's something that you don't harm your engine with and you're on top of. Thanks again, later.